In the following tutorial, we will learn how to paint a cat, how to make the fur and everything. Um, it might take some time, but we will try to do the process as fast as we can. I will fast forward the video. We will start with a sketch. Nothing that complicated, not showing too many details. And then we will go ahead and paint the background. It's really important when you paint uh, everything, everything, no matter what you paint, to paint the background first, but mainly animals, fairy animals, because in that way you will get the effect of the hair coming out of the animals. So make sure to paint the background first. Uh, Put it really close to the lines of the drawing that you made. Really, really close. In that way, when the hair comes out of the actual animal, you will see that hair splitting and it will create the illusion of real fur. I will fast and forward the video, the, um, some parts of the video, so you can watch it better and just pick the important things or important tricks that you need to learn in order to create this animal. Okay, now it's time to lay the first layer. Remember this, if you want to create something realistic, if you want to create uh, something that looks really nice, you gotta apply multiple layers. I have seen people just applying one layer and they make amazing job, but it might take like really, really good skills for achieving those goals with just one layer. So I like to block uh, my painting first uh, since I am working with a black background I will try not to go too dark because usually when there's animals involved I like to block my animal with um, with a darker color because in that way when I start applying the layers for the fur for the coat hair coat it will be better because if you see the the hair is not even if the hair is white, it will not look white completely. You will see some brown parts, some dark parts, and you create that effect using layers. Um, I will try to post a picture of the actual animal so you will see what I'm talking about uh, if I find out how to do it. But well, I will start doing the applying some darks, uh, not darks, but um, gray colors for my under, under layer. And it depends on the darkest the area, the darkest the gray. But on the top, I will start with something light. As I told you right now, I'm doing something light because I'm working with a um, with a black background. If I was working with some other kind of backgrounds, like a light background, I would probably be using like more darker uh, colors for the for the skin of the of the cat. And we will fast forward again. Now I will go ahead and paint the eye. The eye and the nose are really important to me because in that way I can measure. I use the eye as a reference. It's like a center of the painting. Uh, and in that way I can see if the nose is off, the ears are off, um, all that. Uh, we will start with a base color like green since the, cat, the, the eye of the cat is green and I will do it light. I will apply the light layer first. Some people apply the dark layer first, but not me. I will apply the, the dark layer. And to make it more realistic, it, it, this is just the beginning, you will see. Um, I will use some some brown for the eyelashes or, or and, and eyebrows or, or the outside area of the hair. And now I will go ahead and paint the, bro uh, and paint the nose while the eye dries that's another thing never some people is good applying wet on wet paint but i like to let it dry in order to create better effects uh as i too uh, as i told you i paint layer by layer so right now i'm just painting the base of the eye and getting the shape of the nose in that way i can measure if my drawing is off or where i need to work more 
and and that I will try to explain how to paint the eye because I it's really important the eye needs to look realistic as realistic as possible in that way it will bring life to your painting Now I will start working more carefully on the eye. If you see, I will. I'm trying to decide how light or how dark I will want it. Usually, the lightest part of an eye will be the bottom, because the upper part will be covered by the eyebrow. So I'm trying to decide how wide, how light I want to go, and I'm playing with some um, blue. Uh, I mean, white and yellow. Never apply pure white because I will save the pure white just for reflections that's the, the the main purpose of white and light in a color I am dipping my brush in water to to blend the green with the white that I already laid because I don't want it to be like completely solid white uh, a complete solid white now I will try to work on the top and since if a darker area I will darken it with using my blue as I told you before, I like to work with a limited palette. I don't like to use all those colors that you can find in the market because it makes it much complicated to me. If I want to make a color look darker, I would just apply some blue. And if I want to make a color lighter, I will just apply some yellow or probably some white. Again, I'm going to go again to the bottom and my brush is wet and I'm using it. I'm dipping my brush again in water in order to to blend the white because I don't want it to be so solid so solid when I, as soon as I applied I noticed that it was so solid so I'm like blending it now with some water and giving that shape of the round eye always like creating that effect of the light going through something invisible that, like the routine there's nothing there but I'm playing with with my head with my mind I'm thinking about how can I make this look better and I always respect the shape of the eye it's like in a sphere if you see I'm working like in a circle way, circular way I'm not working in a vertical or horizontal or horizontal way I am trying to follow the shape of the eye I'm gonna try to make my eyelashes and eyebrows like more solid and work a little bit on the dark area of the eye I usually don't use black but since acrylics dry really well and doesn't affect the colors that much as an oil I will use a stray black a stray black because that's the problem with working with black in oils when they dry they dry different and if you use black it will create a different effect like it will it will ruin the contrast of the picture but in acrylics they dry really well so I am not afraid I'm not not shy of using the color black at all and I really like it because it's really hard to create your own black using the primary co primary colors. It's still working on the shape of the eye. Make sure that it looks nice. Everything else can look off, but the eye has to. The eye and nose gotta look immaculate. They gotta look. They gotta look nice because that's what brings your painting to life. That's the only way that you will achieve that vivid effect of like there's something there that's how you will treat your brain and letting it letting it believe that there's actual something there and it's just like paint laying on a piece of paper a canvas now i'm working again with the bottom of the eye if you see i'm lighting up my green again with a wet brush going like in the areas that they need to be lighter and then i will start blending again and blending I think that that part of the eye will be lighter so I add some more white to the to the to the green and if you see probably I will dip the brush inside the water and blend it again again dipping the brush in my in my cleaning my brush and I think that is well right now I'm not start working inside the iris but I'm thinking that I'm start Doing it right now I'm using some black I dip my brush in water to dilute that paint and not put it so poor and also if you dilute with water it will be easier for you to move the paint around 
it is much easier that if you use the, the paint straight from the tube. So always keep some water with you when you're working on details. Because in that way your brush will move freely. Now I'm gonna start working on the iris of the eye of the cat. And I, if you see, I'm not using a solid black right now because I'm testing the water. If the, the, the place where I'm laying the paint is not the right one, I can cover it with some green again. And I think that it looks nice. So I will go ahead and reshape the eyes, the circle, and work on the iris to make it look better. It takes time. If you want to do, always feel proud of every single paint that you make, but uh, if you spend more time, you will feel prouder. Uh, no matter how complicated it looks or how disappointed you feel, uh, always never give up. I never took any painting or art classes, and I've been doing this for seven years. This is my second attempt on acrylics and, and it came out really well. I was using my oil painting techniques and I like acrylics better because they dry faster. So it's, it is not tedious to wait for the next layer to get dry. So right now I am going to work with some more eye reflections, making sure that the eye looks realistic and darkens, darker some areas with some blue over the green that I already have I'm trying to make sure that everything looks nice in the eye and you see me deep in the brush in the pure white so it means that it's time for the highlights highlights of the eye I have seen people making the mistake that they just put a dot in the eye and usually the highlight of an eye will not be just a dot unless that is like a tiny painting and you just need to make sure to trick the brain not letting him know that there is a highlight there but in this case the the eye is big enough and we can work freely i'm gonna use some highlights in the eyebrows in the part of the outer area of the eyeball to create that effect of something wet uh, that's why i'm using pure white uh, it will trick your brain making it believe that there is something wet right there Now, as you can see, I will start working with the fur. Um, usually, I make mistakes and I might lay the wrong paint, and, but it doesn't matter. Since this is a painting, I can lay some other layer on top of it, and actually, it might help me. I will start from the top of the head, and I always follow the direct the direction of the actual hair. I'm playing with colors. I'm gonna start with some dark brown, mixing my own colors as always, light it up a little bit, making sure that it's the color that I really need, and I will go ahead, and if you see how I apply the paint, is in the same shape of the hair, in the same direction of the hair, that helps a lot, it makes, makes you convinced that there's, there is hair in that area once again this is the first layer so it might not look like nothing amazing but you gotta follow the pattern that 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 direction of the hair in order in order to achieve the your goal that is getting real looking fair in your painting you see I'm in the way that I apply the, the, the brush I put some pressure and then I let it go and I move to in the same direction game lighting up playing with the colors just 
placing all kind of colors around the, the, the canvas, around the area. Lighting up, darking colors. Working carefully around the eye area. Still not using nothing too dark in the cat, in the in the hair of the cat. Just going with middle tones of gray. Again, you see the movement of my hand is mimicking the shape and the direction of the hair. So it's really important to, to do that. It's really important. Randomly applying the paint all over the place, but always respecting the rule of the direction of the hair. Finally, we'll start giving some shape to the hair. I will apply now a dark coat of fur. Why am I applying the dark now? Because in that way, when I start applying the... the have you seen those hairs that stick out, out of, the, of the cat and mix with the, with the black ones? Well, they, this will be the best way to achieve that effect. In that way, when I apply the, the, the dark is on the bottom, I can ap apply any kind of lighter color on top of that dark and it will make it, uh, it will bring forward that hair, making you believe that there is some more hair behind that white hair. That's why I'm applying the darks now. Still applying the black on the hair. If you see, I'm covering already the white, the lightest colors that I had before, making it more dark, uh, reshaping the edges of my cat, giving it shape. I thought that the chin was too white, so I fixed it, and I am working on on the dark hair of the cat right now. Once again, if you see how I follow the direction of the hair, how I move the brush, I don't go crazy, I don't go to um, painting hair by hair. I just randomly, well, not randomly, I just uniformly follow the direction of the hair and, and apply the paint in that way. If you see, it's looking like, a, like feathers. <laughs> it's looking like feathers, but actually, Soon it will look like a real hair, realist not real but realistic hair. Again, if if you see, I'm painting the chest of the cat, following the shape, the the direction of the lines of the hair, not just uh, doing it going horizontal or vertical. No, you gotta follow the directions of the lines of the hair. In that way, you will achieve the that. A realistic uh, effect in the fur. It's still working on the black hair of the cat, mm, shaping the the edges of my painting finishing the background covering all those white scratches keep on working on the hair like on the darkest areas covering like uh, with a dry brush the the dark the gray areas that i already had before working on the nose i'm not gonna put too much emphasis on the nose since it's not that complicated it's just some brown red and some highlights some black around the nose to make that shape, reshaping the lips of the cat. Um, uh, it's not too much emphasis, just putting some highlights in the eye. Still working on the hair. If you see the, the mouth, I'm 
putting some glazes of gray to make it like darker not too light because I don't want that area to be too light and now this is when I am going to start applying lighter layers of, of hair now this is the fun part we will start applying all those tiny hairs that stick out from the the darkest areas I will use like a light brown color again following the direction of the hair uh, cleaning my brush and making it wet so the paint will move freely and better um, again just applying random hairs sticking out of those dark areas and that will help a lot to make the fur looks realistic just be patient patiently patiently applying those random hairs For the hair in the ears, it is the same process. The only difference is that the lines will be longer and always following the direction, not just crushing the ear, no, just following the directions of the hair. I sometimes I make like semicircles in order to make that hair look more natural or not semicircles but like not a straight lines but with some uh, I, I don't know the word but <laughs> that that's the point I, I know that you get the point and still keeping on uh, working on the hair like every single hair not well not every single hair but most of it the vis the visible hair working on the visible hair and that will help a lot will bring the the painting to life Now it's time to start working on the chest hair. I'm using an old brush. And it has all the bristle split and that helps me. I have heard that there are some brushes like especially for fur but I like to use my old brush. Um, I can I've used that brush and I don't care. I never throw away my old brushes unless that they break. Because you never know when you will need them. If you see when I get the paint, I would put some pressure and split the ends of the bristles. The, the split the ends of the brush and then apply the paint. In order to save time and also to make it look better. Because I will I will create like that hair that is on top of another one without that much effort so for that reason I like to use old brushes and I have used them as you can see I just push them against the the paper in order to split the ends and create that effect of hair I'm just using some white 
working on the chest right now deep in the brush and water to make it more like the paint more better to work with uh, if you see I'm working outside the already outside on the dark area on the dark area of the painting to achieve that effect of her coming out of the cat of the fur and it is so simple it's not that complicated it might look really hard but with patient you will be able to create this painting by yourself or any other painting of animals with her uh, now I'm going to paint the body of the cat the back of the cat I'm not making it too um, too light because in that way I will create create an effect of depth like if the body of the cat is still in the shades in the black area of the room that's why it's not that visible and I am not making those colors so strong just using uh, colors uh, dilu diluted with water and and that will create the effect of the fur on the back but you see it's so simple to create a fur to create the hair now it's taking shape and the purpose of painting is to trick the eye to make the eye believe that there is there is something in front of you when it's just paint laying on a paper on a canvas and it's still applying those uh, those hairs on the cat I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit on the head when I make a mistake I just clean it with my finger and it's not a big deal it's not a big deal mixing some dark and, and light colors um, adding some more texture because that's really important when you paint a texture uh, again again if you want to be satisfied with your painting you gotta invest some time I am not investing the most expensive paint the most I'm using the cheap paint and once again if I can do it you can do it I never took a, an art class a drawing class I just had the desire and that's what's pushing me every day to become better I'm not trying to be better than any known artist I'm just trying to be better than me every painting that I make uh, that's the purpose again I'm working on the hair you see if I made a mistake I just clean it and I've used the brush again against the paper and again following the lines the lines that's really important because that will create the the real fair effect The painting is almost complete now, just adding some details like the cat mustache, really important, really important, because if you don't, it will look like, I don't know, like an alien cat, no. <laughs> just adding the mustache, I don't, I'm not like really crazy, at this point, I forgot that I have another brush for, for doing that. So I was using this old brush and it was like a really hard. Later on I find I found my brush and for doing like long hairs, long hairs, it is nice to use one of those brushes with long, long, uh, long bristles. And they are really good for making long hair. I might upload another video making some fur using that brush later on and that's it for today that's the cat i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something from me if you have any question just ask in the comments 
and until next time i will keep on making some videos depending on how much how many people watch them thank you